and darkened my sun after all that I've been through. Who on earth can I turn to? I look to you. a blessing praise the Lord hallelujah I'm free I am free praise the Lord I'm free no longer by soul is resting it's just a blessing praise the Lord hallelujah I am free It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am free. 
to do on this morning that it's not one of the easiest ones that I've ever had to do. What we're going to ask today is though that we draw on the memories that would put a smile on our face about our loved one that has departed from this life. I see here where it's calling for a scripture and prayer is Pastor Miles here. I don't want to overlook anyone. Well, I will take care of the prayer and the scripture. Let us bow. We thank you, Father God, for this day that you have allowed us to come together as family, as friends, that we come to celebrate the life of our dear brother, our uncle, our son, our friend. We ask now, Father God, that you be with this family. Keep your loving arms of comfort around them in this bereaved time. Allow them to draw on the memories that make them smile on the days that their eyes are filled with tears. Allow the stories that he had whispered or spoken to the ears of his family be that thing that sustain them on the days they feel his weakest. But allow us, Father God, to look to you for our substance and our strength. As we proceed, we do so by your might and thy will. Allow your hand to be over this celebration is our prayer. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. I figured I would pull off of a very familiar scripture when we speak on reading a scripture on today said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the church said, Amen. Amen. We're going to ask now if we would have a musical selection, and then we will come back with uh, acknowledgments and condolences. Amen. Take me to the king, I don't have much to bring, my heart's sorry in pieces, it's my offering, take me to the king. Truth is I'm tired, options are few. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt and abused. I can't pray when 
At this time, we'll have uh, acknowledgments and condolence. Uh, Leanne Kaysen. afternoon. Uh, we have a lot of acknowledgments and condolences, but unfortunately, they were forgotten. But we, as a family, do want to come, and we want to thank you all for coming out. And we know um, this is a great loss for our family. Um, we just keep getting hit harder and harder and harder. 
But we as a family, we love each other, and we're going to stay together, and we will stand. And we just want to say thank you, and we love you, and continue to continue to love on my family and to keep them in your prayers. And we just say thank you. In Jesus' name, Father, amen. Okay, they do have one. Just one second, please. Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church of Jesus Christ, John Modest Mile, Senior Pastor. May 15, 2020. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 1 and 2. The Morning Star Baptist Church family extends our sincere to sympathy and love to Miss Larice Moore and your family during the celebration of life of your son, Mr. Ralford Moore, Jr., for you are in our prayers today. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, may you find comfort as you look back on precious memories and the healing power of God's amazing love. We know that today your hearts are heavy and filled with sorrow, but know that God is still with you and that he will strengthen you during this difficult time. God's word let us know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. The love and joy you share will make you strong. Be comforted in the knowledge, it be comfort in the knowledge that your loved one will live on in your hearts and minds of those who loved him, know him and blessed by his friendship. May God make God your hope and continue to look up to the hills from whence cometh your help. His wisdom is unfailing. His promises are true and his grace is sufficient. May you feel his comforting arms around you as he gives your family inner peace. Know the Morning Star family is just a phone call away when you need us. Preferably submitted, John Malice, Malde, Modest Miles, Senior Pastor. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Remembering with you, when the heart is grieving, God comes near to bring us comfort to catch every tear. May God hold you close, comfort you gently, and carry you through in prayer and sympathy. I will be your God through all your lifetime. I made you and I will care for you, Isaiah 46, 4. Downtown Helen Brown and James L. Clark. It says, uh, Moorhead, Mama Girl, Life, I'm sorry, Moonhead, Mama Girl, uh, Val, Clark, I think it's a Clark, Mark, Rusty, Mel, La, La, L A F A Y E T T E, Lafayette, and then the whole 55th game, smile is many more smiles. Amen. The funny thing is, we all knew who she was talking about, even though she didn't say it, didn't we? <laughs> We're going to ask now if we have another musical selection, and then we will have the words of reflection that will be read in silence. Amen. God bless everyone. It's a sad occasion. Bruce is well known, well loved. He's going to be missed. We all may not have coronavirus, but we all have ingested distress. I just want to let you know from experience, God can do anything but fail. I had planned to sing one song, then I had planned to sing another song, but I, but I. I believe I, I want to remember Bootsy in a happy way because he always was, you know, in a good spirit most of the time. Like, like they say in the obituary, well-dressed. 
and, and love music. Real quick. One of these mornings, it won't be long. You'll look for me, and I'll be gone. Yeah. That's the one I was going to sing. But this is the one I'm going to sing. Now, Lord, it's all right to clap your hands. Don't move the mountain. Just give me the strength to climb. And Lord, don't take away my stumbling block. Just lead me all around. Now listen, Lord, I don't bother nobody. I try to treat everybody. Just give me the strength to climb. And Lord, oh Lord, don't take away my stumbling block. Just lead me all around. Thank you. Now when my folks enslave me, somebody know what I'm talking about. These things they may try to do. Just give me the strength to climb. And Lord, oh Lord, don't take away my stumbling block. Just leave me alone. My Lord. Bless the family. Bless y'all. Church, say amen. Church, say amen again. I'm going to ask now if we would reflect on reading the, the program, uh, Moment of Silence, so that we can reflect on the memories. And then after that, we're going to ask if that you have comments about Bootsy, that you give us your abbreviated version so that the family doesn't have to be here longer than what needs be. Keep your comments to two minutes. Amen? Amen. time we will be accepting comments. If you have a comment, if you would like to come over here to the podium, speak comments, two minutes at two minutes. We're going once, twice, 
So to the young lady in the yellow shirt, we're going to come over here. Nietzsche, I'll give you this one first. Hi, family. I just got a good memory of him. One day, we, I was on 55th. He said, hey, I heard you got a nice new big apartment. Uncle Boosie, how you know I got an apartment? I stood at the gate talking to Malia for 10 minutes. She told me about the apartment, how you moved and everything. He said, I always talk to her. That's the smartest four-year-old I know. She had a whole conversation with you. <laughs> I'm going to love and miss him so much. He always stopped me when he see me, asked about JVI. And I'm unique. What's she doing with that school? Ain't nobody going to take them engineering classes about her. So I'm going to miss you, Uncle Boosie. Real, really, really miss you. OK, so um, I know Boosie basically my whole life or whatever. And like, sorry, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> that was like the closest daddy that I ever had. And he is my daddy. Like, I had daddy issues. And he never made me feel no different. The whole family never made me feel no different. Every time my brother was there, I was there. I never felt like this was my brother family. I felt like this was our family. Like. The love was so unconditional. And even though I live in another state, it's still, it's always been that way. And then I just felt like, even like all the time, Boosie, like Kia, Kia, he called me Kia. You know what I mean? It's Kia, this Kia that run me around. I miss running him around town from the beginning of the day until the end of the day. Take me here, take me there, take me here. And it was just us bonding. And no matter what, he had $20, here's $20, here it is, here it is. Have you ate today? Like. He was so like attached to me, and no matter who he approached, this is my daughter. It was never, this is my bro my son, sister, or my baby mama daughter. It was always, this is my daughter. I never felt no different. And so I tried to not be so emotional. I tried to be a support, and I'm so sorry, you guys, but a part of me has been taken away, and I miss Boosie already. And I just, I've been having chats with him, and I've been talking to him, and it's just like, he was the most flyest, amazing man that I ever met. And I love the purity of his heart, and I thank everybody for accepting me and welcoming me into your life from ever. So I love you guys, and thank you. God had been speaking to me the last couple of days. About strength. That we're all going to be needing here in the next few days, months and years. But strength. The definition of strength. I read it saying the quality or state of being physically strong. It also had another definition, the capacity of an object or substance to withstand great force and pressure. Well, I'm here standing here to uplift my brother that's went on, but I think the strength and pressure and, and the strong one was the matriarch of this family. And I see strength and perseverance in this matriarch. And I know you've, we've lost the patriarch. And through all of that strength of losing Rafa Sr., the strength of losing a daughter, the strength of losing a grandson, and now the, matriarch, the patriarch granddaughter as well. But now the, 
the acquired patriarch, which was Raffert, Bootsy, and we had to lose him too. And through all of that, the strength that the matriarch is able to sustain herself, it's unbelievable. And God told me, I read a couple of scriptures. I did. I read a couple of scriptures about strength. And it read, Deuteronomy 31 and 6, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of the Lord, your God. He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Psalms 46, three, 1 and 3, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. We're in trouble right now. But through strength, we will gain st strength, we will gain perseverance, and we can keep moving forward because we all going to make it there one day. See, he's made it to glory. He's went on past us. He, he, we, we wasn't ready for him to go, you know. Nathan wasn't ready for Boosie to go. I wasn't ready for Boosie to go. I lost my brother. And so I'll say to the, the great grandsons, she needs another patriarch. Who's going to stand? Who's going to stand in the midst until they get ready, Ms. Moore? I'm sure me and Nathan will stand. And you can depend on us, because we love you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not ready for this, <clears throat> so I'm going to go anyway. I love y'all family. Really do. Um, I just took a couple of little notes, and I'm going to just say it and move. Uh, I love you, Uncle Boosie. Um, just growing up, just looking across the street my whole life, uh, it's going to be different now, not seeing all members on the porch. I've seen um, the crew dwindle down a little bit, but... I want y'all to understand that the force and the power and the spirit that I still fell out of that house is still the same. Um, even though it's fewer individuals, you know, our God always increased by decreasing. He always add by subtracting. And um, it's a test for us all to know and feel his love in those times because he's testing us to see how faithful we are to him in these times. Y'all got our arms. Whatever y'all need, y'all know we always there. Um, I love y'all. I really do. I'm going to say that again. Uh, Uncle Bootsy was just like his father. He was one of the quietest, most loving, most humble, and giving men that I grew up knowing. Um, I picked up a lot of jewels from Bootsy. Um, unconditional love was one of them. Uh, you know, no matter what, he just never broke. That's just one man that I can look out and see that never broke. Like, I just, I just never seen that type of strength besides those two men and my family. You know, it's, we got pillars in our, in our, in our uh, generation, in our, our, our hood, and he was one. Boosie was one of them. Even though, you know, Grandpa Rapper, he didn't say much, that strength that he just carried was, we was blessed. But I know the strength that was behind him. <laughs> Miss Larice. That is one of the most strongest women in life. I want y'all to hug on this woman as much as y'all can because she gave us strength when she was going through, every time. Um, Tracy, Toya, y'all my sisters. You know, um, y'all didn't lose a brother, y'all gained one. 
you know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all already know. We in it through the thick. Um, but we got to learn how to love God just like we have unconditional love for Boosie, just how he had unconditional love for us. And that's how we get unwavering favor. That's how you get that favor that no matter what, if it's a, if it's cars and traffic and God say, go walk in traffic, have the belief that when he go and stop that traffic and cause a car accident, you're going to get to where you're going to need to be. Stop being scared of the stumbling blocks. This is just a stumbling block like my brother said. It's a stumbling block, but it, it, you got to get up. We got to keep walking. We got to move forward the mark because it's an end goal. It's an end plan, and he know it. Um, and I'm going to just leave everything with uh, the absence of fear is faith. And the absence of faith is fear. Love y'all. I don't know why I just got nervous though, and it's all family though. I, don't, I didn't come with a speech, but I just wanted to go random up. Man, you know, y'all ain't allowed accepting me and y'all family since day one. Auntie Moore, Tracy, Toy, we didn't slept in the same bed growing up. <laughs> Rest in peace, Jamal J, I miss AJ. We all grew up together as one. Yeah, we grew up in life. We may not stay in contact as much, but one thing I say, like, my biological father haven't been in my life. I don't even know him. Only father I know is God and my and, and Ralph and more right here. And it's like, I cherish so many moments every day of my life with him to today till he died, to the day he was in his deathbed. You know, and it's like, I watch him and my mama. And they like the strongest people in both of them. And, and like he the one gave me my sense of humor. That's why they would say I play too much. I joke too much. I don't ever find nothing serious. But him and my mama, I watched them battle and go through stuff. Police come. I remember moments, you know, I'm like, dang, I see the police come. I go looking for I go looking for him to tell him after I see him going through, but this is my mom. I'm like, well, let me go save him. Where the police? I go out the back door. I look out the back door looking for him. He on top of the roof. He like Shh. I say, all right, I shut the door, you know what I'm saying? I shut the door. It was like 87, I'm like seven, eight years old. I'm real young. I'm like, five, I'm like, okay, I'm about five probably. I don't remember. It was young. I'm like, okay. So I'm really like, dang, but I saw the strength in him. I'm one, I'm in my grandma's. Man, he come to the house one, it was real late. Man, the man come in, he swole. Somebody just 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 beat him real with bats in there. He said, I'm a little kid. I see my pops. I'm, but I see the strength in him. Man, it looked like he, he, yeah, he just taking it. Yeah, man, give me the hospital. He swole. I see the man in this man, like, man, this man, the strongest man I probably, like, thought in life. Like, you wouldn't think nothing would happen to him. You would think it would have to be his heart or heart attack or something from the uses of life, man. But one thing in life, though, I love y'all, man. We have shared so many special moments, man. I love you, Grandma. I'm always here. I'm in town. I'm always, you call me. I know I'm going to do more. You old. I need to do more. But at the same time, I love all y'all. We need to stay more in contact, man. Rest in peace, bro. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I am uh, the mother of two beautiful kids that Boosie had blessed me with. We had two kids. And Tara, she is up there with her dad right now. But um, I just want to say, the day I met Boosie was probably one of the best things in my life as far as family or in her. Because when I met Miss Moore, she was the type, man, she was on right for right. She, this lady never, ever turned me down. She never got mad at me. She never treated my kids no different. She was the first lady that ever invited the other kids that I had, Terrence and Kiki. And we never knew any different once we realized like, wow, we can bring the other kids too. You know, they can come. You know, I never knew that. And they never knew that exists until I got with this beautiful lady here, her and Mr. Moore. They 
welcome their door and accept my kids and you know and ever since then I realized there are good people out there there are people that cares about your other kids you know along with the sibling I just want to say I love you Miss Moore and anything you need you know I will never turn my back on you and I love the rest of you guys and this man here Man, we got stories, but y'all ain't here long enough for our stories. <laughs> but one thing about it, Ms. Moore never turned her back. But them sisters, oh, I had problems with them. You don't want the sisters. I had problems, but Ms. Moore, she the only one stood up. I mean, you know, but don't mess with the sisters. They wouldn't let him live. He's the baby, you know. He couldn't make his own decision. Oh, no. But, yeah, Ms. Moore, Cheryl. You call, if you know, anything. If he messing with me, call police. If whatever it might take, she was there for me. For me and stuff. But them sisters, they didn't want to hear none of that mess. You know, that's their baby and stuff. But uh, I'm just so glad that I had my son, Toriel, you know, looking just like him. And I'm just blessed to have uh, something behind from him because I got a lot of memories, a lot. And um, I don't know, you got something to say? She's scared, but this the baby. So I just wanted to say I love you, Boosie. Well, I'm Tandra. Um, Boosie looked at me like a daughter too. You could not tell him I was not his daughter. <laughs> um, um, he's, I mean, he always been there for me. If you know, I don't know. <laughs> I love y'all more, family. Uh, when I, I did do some, I, when I came home, Boosie, he always looked out for me. Um, my kids as well. I remember him and my mama was few and what was this, like last summer or something like that. She was ready to go to the 50s and, uh, <laughs> and ring, ring his neck. And I kept telling her, quit doing him like that. Leave him alone. I was on his side. <laughs> They they fight like cats and was fighting like cats and dogs, but in a good way. yeah, in a good way. But she was ra she was ready to ring, <laughs> ring his ready. yeah. But I love y'all. What can still here with me? I'm the sister. That's my brother from another mother. Thank you, Miss Moore, for letting me have a brother. That's all I ever called him was brother. That's it. Not this bro, where my bro, my bro, my bro. That's my bro. That's the only bro I even grew up knowing. We the same age, okay. He's four months older than me, okay. I didn't even know that until today. But look, he's we're the same age. So, but yeah, it's gonna be hard going by, Just asking where my bro at, and I know where he at. He said we're hiding from me because he'd be like. He be looking, see who coming down the street, cause he know Wanda coming. I will come by and check on you. Yes, I checked on him all the time, Miss Moore. I I was always going through the block, honking or just stopping by and hanging out with him and letting him know that I love him and I always love him. And God bless your family. You, Miss Moore. God bless you. You are the strongest lady I know. You are the strongest woman that I know, and I appreciate the family for allowing us to share him with y'all. Hi, uh, I'm Boosie's cousin Snoozy. We all had good names. and. Uh, I got a story about when we was at Southeast. We was in a, we, he was, I was in, we was in, in the junior building, and they used to have those trailers out in the back for math class. And we was, me and Boosie in class, we clowning and acting crazy. And it was some guy that didn't like Boosie, and because he thought Boosie was trying to talk to me. He didn't realize me and Boosie cousins, but he thought Boosie was trying to take his girlfriend. And I was like, what? And so he got mad, and I took the math book and I cracked him across his face. <laughs> and he looked, 
And Boosie just stopped and he just shook his finger. He's like, I wouldn't do that if I was you. I just wouldn't do that. And the guy was like, how you gonna just take him over me? I was like, can I see my cousin? <laughs> and it was like, he was like, he ain't none of your cousin. He ain't none of your cousin. I said, oh, okay, well, if you look at us closely, we kind of look alike, but <laughs> it was like, but Boosie was so cool. He never raised his voice. He never did nothing. He just sat there and just shook his finger and like, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> that was Boosie. He was just so cool and laid back. That's what I remember about my cousin. Rest in peace, love. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. We thank for all the warm memories and comments about Boosie. You know, for the longest, I didn't realize that Boosie was named after Mr. Ralph. <laughs> I just knew him as Boosie. Today is one of the hardest things that I've had to do since eulogizing Angie's son, Danny. Before that, it was one of the hardest things I had to do since eulogizing my big brother, Tony. Now here we are again, eulogizing another big brother. I was speaking to one of my friends this morning, and we are getting so segregated. The more that life goes on, the more that those that we love go on. Anybody follow where I'm going? We can loosen up in here because I'm not one of those that's got to be buttoned up. We, we going to celebrate Bootsy. You celebrate him with your tears. You celebrate him with your smile. You celebrate him with your yells. You celebrate him with your hand clap. But we're going to celebrate Bootsy on the day. I'm going to talk real quick. But Bootsy has already spoken what needs to be said. And then I'm going to give you the opportunity from this day forward to choose how you want to go this day forward. I'm going to read to you, and since I know you don't have your Bibles, you're just going to have to trust what I'm telling you is the truth, all right? <laughs> but uh, we're going to take uh, Matthew 6. Our Father, beginning in the 10th verse. Y'all have heard this before, I'm sure. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's use as a subject as we talk one another with each other, family, give us this day. Let's talk about this day. Before May 4th, the day that Boosie got a chance to take flight, everybody's mind was on one thing, coronavirus. Y'all know how sometimes we shorten it, Rona, Roro. But that was what was on our mind. Are y'all with me this morning? Everybody still had one mindset on that day. And the only thing we kept saying is, I can't wait till this is over so that I can go back to the day before my life got turned upside down. Y'all walking with me? Give us this day. When things go wrong, things catch us off guard, Sometimes we say, Lord, today. Nobody says, Lord, I need you tomorrow. They say, I need you right now, today, Lord. And I understand that what the family is going through, Lord, they need you this day. They need all the smiles, the hugs, the kind words. They don't need it tomorrow. They probably needed it yesterday, but they always need it this day. I want to first of all say my love and my heart is to this family. 
you guys could have chose, I told Tracy this, you could have chose any minister in this city. Not just because I grew up the street from you guys, but I thank God for this opportunity. It's an honor and I don't take it lightly or slightly. Uh, my mother, my father sent a love. Uh, they wanted to be mindful of the numbers that everybody that needed to be here could be here, but they send their love nonetheless. Uh, funny story, I remember when we moved over on Michigan, and my mom said, that is a pretty lady. She seems so nice. I wonder what her name is. And I said, I think her name is Larice. And my mama said, I don't know why you know what her first name is, but I bet not ever hear you call her by her first name again. It's Miss Moore to you. Any of you know my mother can pretty, pretty much understand how she said that. As we're talking about give us this day, I can go back to the day that I can remember seeing Boosie. I used to call Boosie Cool B, because Boosie was cool. He didn't rush in his stride. He didn't rush in his speech. He didn't rush in his action. Boosie was just cool. I remember we'd be up in the Jefferson's backyard shooting ball. I can't remember Boosie ever playing because Boosie would be so cool on the side <laughs> watching us shoot hoop. Boosie was so cool that I think Boosie was the first dude, either him or Tony, the first dude I ever knew to put on a pair of ballets. That's shoes if, if for some of y'all that's younger. I can remember Boosie always being creased if he had on jeans, shoes matching his shirt, hat to match, and a leather jacket. That leather jacket was either fashionable or if it meant business was about to go down and I don't need to say no more. Depending on what month you saw Boosie in his leather jacket. But Boosie was just cool. I think he was the first one that I saw with them furry kangos turned to the back. He was fashionable. He was a trendsetter. Now, I told you, uh, I had to pay my respects, and I do things. It's a method to my madness. I do things in slight. Boosie was the first dude I told you I saw with a fly pair of shoes, so I had to <laughs> make sure I mash. That's my thing to you, Cool B. I see his son here. You probably don't remember me, but I remember you as a little boy coming up with Tracy and Toy and Cowboy, as my mama named Jamal. And y'all used to come help her plant flowers and things. Give us this day. This is a day of reflecting on the things that Boosie did that brought joy. I remember the first time I can remember Boosie really even saying my name. We was playing basketball again up at the Jefferson's backyard and we was walking back down to the house fixed to probably go get into some min mischief and I was on the porch trying to hurry up and run and change and I heard this real deep voice go, what up Juan? And I said, what's up Boosie? Alright. And that's how it was, kept floating. Later on that night, and this is to let you know, nothing that you do goes unseen. Later on that night, that day, we was finishing up throwing some rocks. I ain't going to tell who was with me because that would be snitching. <laughs> but some of y'all ain't here with me. You know what I'm finna say is the truth. We were throwing rocks at cars. And we would make sure that we would have somebody down at the bottom to see the cars because if it was somebody that we knew, parent, or lived on the block, we'd be like, no, no, no. But if it was not somebody we knew, it was all go, go, go. So we had this old little trail, and I'm going to share it with y'all because that trail, even though it's there, we don't use it for that no more, so I'll tell it. But we would throw rocks. And it would go all the way down to the end where Boobie's house is. And, and those of y'all from the block, y'all know hey, we would creep behind where Moon them stayed. Then the next house, it was the little lot. Then it was Boobie's them house. Then you go up a couple more houses. You go past Pat's them house. And you go by Angie's them house. And I never knew the people that stayed next door to Angie, but they kept their house real neat. And they used to have the poodles that run. Y'all know what I'm talking about. What is it? Miss Rose, okay, thank y'all. 
I, I wasn't the best of neighbor, was I? <laughs> but then you came to the Moore's house. And I knew if I could just run to the Moore's house, I was right at home. So I'm running from my mischief, and it's dark. Booby done went home. Donald done went that way. I ain't snitching because I ain't telling the people whose car we hit. And y'all ain't the police issue. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> y'all something else. And so, when number two people left to run, it was me and Walter. My house was next on the stop. And as we running, I hear this voice. What's up, Walt? What's up, Walt? Man, in the midst of the dark. And we was like, what's up, Boost? Still running. He was like, all right. And that was the thing with Boosie. He would say what's up to see how you was doing, and if it seemed good, it was all right. Give us this day. The day that I can remember that I drove down on May the 3rd, 55th in Michigan, and I saw Donna and Angie on the porch. I didn't know what it was that pulled me to 55th in Michigan on May 3rd. And I just said, I got to get down the block. And I went down Euclid first, and I didn't see anybody on Euclid. And, and this is how I know I'm getting old, because I was born and hit over there on, on 55th in Michigan. But I got to seeing a bunch of young cats that looked like they was interested in what I was driving. I was like, man, I don't want to have to go through this. Let me pull forward. Didn't see anybody on Euclid that knew me, and I didn't see anybody on Euclid that I recognized. So I turned over on Michigan, coming up 55th, and I saw Jetta. She was outside with her sister. And I got a chance to see an extension of my brother Tony and Carmen's lineage. And I'm going somewhere, so y'all walk with me. I got a chance to see the expansion of a lineage from a block that's a couple of generations behind me. And I sat and I spoke for a minute. I got a chance to see Corman's grandchildren. And I kept going down the street. And I looked at my old house. And I said, dang, man, that, 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 ain't, that ain't our house. I kept going a little more. And I said, wow, they done tore down Miss Varney's house. And I kept going down. And as I went down the street, I started seeing a vision of us, how we were when we were kids. I'm talking about this day. I went all the way back in the days, trying to relive before all the hurt that was recent, all the loss and separation. And my mind went back, and as I rolled down the street, I saw Bernard and Naughty playing in their yard that's no longer a house. And I saw Byron and Billy, and I kept going, I saw Craig and Israel, and I kept going, and I saw Doobie and Busty. I went a long way back. And then I got to the Moore's yard, and I saw kids playing, and I kept going, and I saw Donna coming down off of Angie's porch. This is May 3rd. And I said, hey, what's going on, Donna? And Donald kind of gave that look like, who is this Negro calling me from the car? And I giggled a little bit, and I told her that. She said, I sure was. And we exchanged pledging streets. And she went back up the street. Angie went in the house. And I did circle back around the block. Um, and then I got to the house. The next day I saw Tracy sent me a message and said, keep boots in prayer. It's not doing too well. I immediately went into prayer. I said, Lord, whatever it is, let your will be done. Say, I don't believe in getting hold God. I can't tell God how to do his business. I just say, God, whatever your will is, do your will and allow the family to be able to accept your will. That was my prayer for y'all and Boosie. So I made it out to my parents' house and I made sure they were straight. I get a phone call from Booby. And I had just told my mom them, I said, hey, I'll just put Boosie in prayer. Give, put him in your prayers. And I get in the car. 
I get the call that I didn't want to get, saying that Boosie had had a heart attack and passed. I remember that day, sitting in my parents' driveway in my car, that day. I remember the day I got the call from Tony that day. And I had a bunch of days that kept coming together and they were stringing together and sadness started to come up. And just as soon as my eyes welled, just about to drop tears, I started thinking about the days and some that I just shared with you that brought a joy to my heart. And as I talk to you on today, keep the joy in your heart. When it says, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah, we need bread on a daily basis, but the bread that he is seeking for in this psalmist is the living bread, the bread of God. And I know sometimes we like, yeah, 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 them preachers is crooked, yeah, 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 I ain't got time for church. That may be all justifiable. You may have been hurt by some preachers. You may have been hurt by some churches, but I'm here to tell you, God ain't never done nothing to you. Try it. Because one day, we all going to lay out in this chamber. And it's only one way to God. Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Jehovah or the Christ, Messiah. This day, you can no longer say, I didn't know. Because I'm telling you, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And except by him, no other man, no man can enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm mad at Boosie because he got his bowlies first. He had his troop jacket first. He had his kango first. Now you get a chance to see Christ face to face first. So don't cry tears of sadness because Boosie don't feel pain no more. Arthritis ain't affecting his body no more. He understands that he don't have to cry no more. He ain't got to worry about his sisters, his children no more because he's looking face to face in the eyes of the man that holds all of us in his powerful hand. I wish I had a witness here that understood that on this day, we have to raise our hands in submission to everything that we thought we were able to do. Roro let us know, ain't nothing we can do about nothing. We can't even go out of our houses without masks on our face for the fear of what we might breathe in. But I'm going to tell you something. The way that you rule a nation is with fear. And my God did not give me the spirit of fear, but that of power, love, and a sound mind. Not to say that we don't take things that they say serious, but I, 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 I take my God's word even that much more serious. My heart felt with joy when I heard the young lady say that Bootsy stepped in as my father and I didn't know nobody else as my daddy because he made sure I didn't have to look nowhere else for a father figure. She said I had daddy issues and he made sure that I felt as though that he would be the man in my life that I could call daddy and now I'm looking at that man to feel devoid laying in front of this altar in this casket. I'm here to tell you that there is one that will be a father to the fatherless. I wish I had a witness in here. I, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little excited in here that there is going to come a day giving us this day that we're going to have to lay this clay down for the last time. We don't know the day, but we know there is a day that we're going to have to close our eyes for the last time. I wish I had a witness this morning. You might not have a heart problem, but that heart ain't going to start up one of these mornings. And I just thank God that Boosie had a loving family that would be around him as he took his last breath. Now my question to those of us that sit here today, on this day, how are we going to choose to live out the rest of our days. 
things that used to seem of importance really don't seem to matter that much no more. Until today, I hadn't got dressed in a long time, about seven, eight weeks. I'm serious. Maybe it's just me. I would get up, take my bath or shower, put on sweats, put on slides, pick a t-shirt. I wasn't even ironing. That's real. Because the ways of the world has changed in condition. But I want to show you how blessed you are, Miss Moore. I want to show you how blessed you are, Donna, Toya, Tracy. Before today, if you had a funeral service, you would have to drive by, look for a car. Then all of a sudden, before this day, yeah, I thought I forgot what was that. Before this day, you could only have 10 people in attendance. Before this day, and then all of a sudden, on May 4th, it came a time that when I talked to Tracy, she said, I don't even know how we're going to do this yet. I don't know how many people. And God said, I'm going to make it to where you can at least get 50 people to come in and show you that they remembered your son, your brother, your uncle. I'm going to give you at least 50 people to show him how much we love him on this day. This day. I've heard it said by Uncle Tommy, this day, somebody's going to have to step up as a man child and become a man and be a shoulder that both these young ladies can put their head on when they're missing their son and their brother and that their aunties and cousins can hold around them when they're missing their uncle. This day, somebody's going to have to go by and make sure that Miss Moore is all right starting this day. It ain't about just us no more. I'm going to miss Boosie had a way of giggling when he knew he had one up on you. <laughs> he would giggle, and then when he got excited, he would have like a little stutter to him. But that smile was a million dollars. That fashion is unforgettable. And he had a heart that was undeniable. What I like about him, man, Boosie was a protector, just like each and every one of my big brothers were on 55th. It'd be times that I didn't even realize Boosie was in a place. How many of y'all, as I take my seat, remember the Eyes Arcade? Eyes Arcade was an arcade up on Truce. You know what Wings and Things is? Y'all know it today is Aaron Reynolds next to the hair salon place. I know y'all know where it is now. <laughs> that used to be Oz Arcade. And I had a couple of cousins that stayed across Purcell. And when you know where we grew up, you didn't stray too far across Purcell. And I was over across Purcell on Forest. And my cousin then was like, let's go up to Oz. And I was like, mm. And they was like, come on, let's go up to Oz. And so we stopped at 7-Eleven. They're sitting at empty parking lot now next to Bob's. They used to be called MCs. Y'all quit acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. So we stopped at 7-Eleven, we got us some candy and taffy and now, ladies, and we went up to the eyes, and we used to put our quarters on the video games, and it was either Centipede, Gallagher, or Miss Pac-Man, and I'm up there, and I get caught what I thought alone, and some cats was about to hem your boy up in the eyes arcade. And as I get ready to drop this mic, I was always told to put my back up against the wall, and as I got ready to put my back up against the wall, I heard a voice say, hey, why? And I said, what's up, Boosie? He said, all right. And that there is a memory that will last with me forever. Hold each other. Love each other. Past this day, past the quarantine, as this city begins to open up and we realize what our new normal is, this day, remember how the love you had in your heart for Boosie and allowed that to carry on from day in to day out 
is my prayer. We're going to ask now if we bow our head. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. We thank you, Father God, for the words of encouragement to this family. Now, Father, we pray that their heart has more joy than sorrow, that their minds remember more precious memories than heart aches. And we just ask, Father God, that when it's late and everybody has gone home, the last dish from the repast has been washed, and Miss Moore, Donna are sitting up, wrap your arms around them, give them your comfort, give them your peace, that they be able this day to say, I thank you, I feel you, and be able to go on from day to day. These and all things we pray, we ask for, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, let every heart of every believer say amen. 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 We want to put you now back into the hands of the funeral home. Amen. About to lose my breath. There's no more fighting left. Sinking to rise no more. Searching for that open door And every road that I've taken mm, Led to my regret And I don't know if I'm gonna make it Nothing to do but lift my head I look to you
this is a little thing. We can look around and even put the way the world is this you know, day. We we're we're out there with love, with demonstration of gratitude. But again, I still say, as we leave this place, our brother here to rest, grab hold of this matriarch. Grab hold of this mother, this grandmother that is mourning the loss of the son on this day. And make sure that you extend the repast beyond this day. So as we get ready to commit our brother to the ground, we heard it said before, we give ashes to ashes, dust to dust. May he ever and ever rest in the arms of the Almighty God. I say. This time, this will conclude our graveside services. We put it into the hands of the Lord. On behalf of my dad, the entire community of General Hall staff, we'd like to say thank you to the family, our folks, and the trust of your love. As we get ready to leave, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, as we get ready to leave our loved ones, we will be your here. Allow us to leave here all the hurt, bitterness, Unforgiveness. Allow us, Father God, to walk away from love, togetherness, and strength. Father God, we just say thank you for the lives that our brother Lucy has touched. Thank you for the time that we had with him. We appreciate all the laughs, all the time, all the talks. Father, we ask that your mercy extends to us even as we get ready to go back and congregate as a family. These are all things that we see. We're going to see in Christ's name.